Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to send this satellite named Knobs after the character in the Terry Pratchett Discworld series uh, into a Molnia orbit because uh, the Molnia orbit is sort of an interestingly inclined orbit and Knobs was an interestingly inclined character. Uh, and so what we have here is uh, a modified version of the Hogfather uh, satellite and it's modified mainly because the main trunk is smaller and that allowed me to use fewer avionics modules very important that uh, we keep it under 0.4 tons is the limit for those two and that reduces the amount of electric charge drain by quite a lot and so that uh, allowed me to have a better solar panel configuration now uh, one comment that came about from ASME was that my solar panels weren't exactly optimal there and so I've tried to put the ones that were sort of facing further in you know I had them in a regular hexagon on the trunk and instead of doing that I've faced them further out and in fact they do cost a lot uh, we really only need them on the sun facing side but uh, I've decided for this probe just for looks mainly to go with them on both sides but they do cost a lot they're each 300 so that's that's quite expensive when you think about it uh, but for this probe I'll, I'll keep it as is because of looks mainly and I'll figure out better designs later on but at least they're facing a little bit more efficiently by having them tilt out like this the problem with this is that they are attached to the procedural tanks and I use the offset tool so there's no guarantee that they're going to remain facing like this once we leave it but for now it'll be alright I've tucked the RCS ports in here speaking of the RCS ports uh, I still don't it's, it still seems like they're configured to uh, to all have the same thrust I've taken a very brief look at the config files and I uh, can't quite figure it out. There's a very interesting config file for the RCS in the Realism Overhaul folder. Uh, it, it sort of generalizes the RCS in a way I don't, like using Module Manager, at that in a way that I don't understand. And I think something is conflicting with that somehow, but that's, that's a tough one to figure out for me. And of course, this week I've been in the midst of 1.0 hype and trying to figure out uh, version 1.0 because I do still do stock stuff. And so, yeah, I have not had the time I would like to try and figure out the RCS situation. So basically, I'm going to have to use fine controls to prevent the RCS from running muck. I've also uh, shut off this tank to make sure none of the RCS from this portion is used and so that'll give us enough I'm sure that'll give us give us enough Delta V to handle things now Molnia orbits would best be achieved by launching from Baikonur, Baikonur uh, from uh, Kazakhstan which is where they launched uh, you know the, the Soviets and then Russians launched so many satellites into that orbit I think that is what I'm going to go for. I guess it would be more of a challenge to do it from Cape Canaveral. Not really a challenge though. It's just a matter of inclination after all. Okay, here we are in the tracking station with a whole lot of different possible <laughs> contracts for for orbits. And you can see our Hogfather in its orbit there. But what I want to do is change to Baikonur here. And where are you, Baikonur? You're tucked right in there. You're actually right under this orbit, which means that we could probably launch that satellite pretty easily. But let's get uh, let's get Baikonur under the orbit that we're aiming for. Oh, it is actually pretty, isn't it? God, it's hard to sight it. Mm. Could stand to take a little bit more time. I've already calculated the launch azimuth. It's 40 degrees from Baikonur. But this is a matter of getting the longitude of ascending node right. Okay, it looks like it'll be a nighttime launch. We could launch on the other side, I guess. But let's try this. Okay, it's close. It's close. 
I need to give me myself some time. Let's go back to VAB and see if the whole thing's messed up. Okay, let me get Delta V stats out of the way. By the way, remember, there's a tank that's shut off, so it's not including that. Uh, it seems to have tucked them in because they're clipping these now. Let me readjust them. Okay, so I totally understand that the game has gotten mess up the panels of uh, this probe. But I don't have too many solutions for the problem of electric charge right now. When you think about it, this probe is 0.4 tons. So using even these modular girder segments, which are frankly huge by comparison to the probe, uh, would add quite a lot of mass. Uh, I guess cubic octagonal stress like this, but still it's a little bit... it'll take some doing to figure out how to fit them on, and still they add actually what ends up being a substantial amount of mass considering how light the probe is. So yeah, I'll have to think about that, and right now this was the solution that popped up in my mind, and we'll try better things. I mean, satellite design is something but with all the satellite contracts we have, I guess I can do a lot of work on satellite design anyway. So we will try different things at different times. And I'm not going to be bowed to this little bug that has procedural parts not allowing us to offset things properly. Okay, here we are, nighttime launch. Let's verify that we are under our target orbit. It looks like we're pretty close. I mean, uh, it'll take us some time to adjust to it anyway. Okay. I don't know if we're too early or too late or for the adjustment. We'll see. I haven't done too many of these inclined orbit things. So let's go. Sorry for it being in the dark, but I will try to lighten it up where possible. So we'll be wanting heading 40 degrees. And let's roll to that now. Okay, well, after focusing on 1.0 stock stuff for for a few days now, this is a drastic change of pace. The new aerodynamics and re-entry heating is it's a bit confusing, I'll, I'll have to admit. It's it's not really far in daily re-entry, that's for sure. There's a, there's a lot to adapt to. It's, it's not entirely intuitive. I think some of the lack of intuitiveness is probably due to... There, there are a few bugs that are quite evident. There are certain parts that overheat in a way that they probably shouldn't. There are certain ways that center of mass is calculated that is probably not quite right. I know there are stock bug fixes now for some of that stuff. Uh oh, this says have a thermometer on the Dang it! We were supposed to put a thermometer on the satellite. Ah, oh, I totally missed that. Longitude of ascending node has to be negative 183 degrees. Are we gonna get there? Well, we'll call this a test launch then, because I don't have the thermometer on. Now, some people have wondered from time to time how I could be interested in playing stock when I've spent so much time in realism overhaul, and there are a few reasons. First of all, I have boundless curiosity, so uh, I do like messing around with stuff uh, regardless. So any new thing you throw at me, I'll, I'll mess around with. And they do add new features to the game, so I, I like to see what that's all about all the time. But uh, beyond that, there's also frame rates. Frame rates are nice. I, I like to practice things with, with stock that I will eventually do in Realism Overhaul, 
because stock is just smoother and and there's less to think about and so if I'm gonna try something like landing a stage back at the KSC for instance that's not something I'm going to do in realism overhaul first first I want to try that out in stock just to get some of the basic issues down before I try to do it in realism overhaul which will have a totally different set of issues on top of the ones that we would face in stock So, calculation for launch azimuth, for those who don't know, you take the cosine of your target inclination divided by the latitude, the cosine of the latitude of your launch site, and take that ratio and then do the arc sine of it, so sine to the negative one on your calculator if you have that. So just, uh, again, cosine of your target inclination divided by the cosine of the latitude of your launch site. Take that ratio and then do the arc sine of it. Sine to the negative one. And that is your launch azimuth. So I suppose negative 183 degrees will be the equivalent of 177 degrees, right? I'm assuming this is true. So we're heading towards that number, though I don't know if we're going to hit it quite right. We might have launched too early. We're not too far off, but we might have launched too early. It won't be hard to adjust. And given our previous experience, the requirement is not particularly uh, tight. And we are on the zeroth second. Okay, and off they go. Alright. This continues to be a marvelously successful rocket for us, the Telemon 5. We really don't need the landing data here. So, I've already got the modifications for this system, the, especially the Vimes, you know, the rescue Vimes that we use to rescue the Kerbal. I've modified that in order to make it suitable for a lunar flyby mission. So we've got a, we've got a rocket standing by to take a Kerbal on a lunar fly, flyby mission with life support supplies, of course. And uh, so, so yeah, uh, that is a mission that is pending. We have other things that we also need to do. Uh, for instance, we still have the lander, right? The Rincewind lander. I've modified the Relina stage uh, so that the upper part of it has a little bit more fuel. And I'm planning to use more uh, with the fine controls for the RCS so that we don't waste so much RCS fuel. And so, hopefully, maybe that'll be enough to get the rinse wind onto the lunar surface. So that is another thing I want to try. But uh, otherwise, the rinse wind probe itself can't be modified too much because then I have to put another controller on it, and that means more more power, and you, you know that it all cascades from there. Okay, I think we can dump fairings now. And with that, I can extend the main antenna. Not the main antenna, sorry. The, just the spiky one at the top. The main antenna is the one that can reach the moon. So those are the other two missions we've got. We've got lunar flyby and uh, probe landing on the moon. We really shouldn't have too high... An well, I'll keep the... Yeah, actually, we have to pay attention to where our periapsis and apoapsis end up, don't we? I will adjust. Okay, so say it with me, and that's when the game crashed. Yes, well, uh, random crashes in the middle of flight are, are no good. But, well, we're, we're back here again, and so I might as well recover the vessel and slap that thermometer on. Before the next episode, I've really got to go through my my game data folder and just yank any parts I'm not using out. 
Okay, I think I got them good enough, but normally whenever you've got something right, it mentions that here. But I've got a thermometer on, and it's not reading that I have a thermometer on, so that's a little bit worrying. I mean, it reads that I have a new unmanned probe that has power and an antenna, but it doesn't seem to recognize the thermometer. Okay, wow. We just went from being at 3.3 gigs of RAM to 3.47 in like a flash. I was about to say 3.3 gigs, gigs of RAM and then it suddenly went to 3.47 once uh, physics loaded. Uh, okay, well, let's try it. But it is pretty borderline. Okay, here we go. Alright. Okay, now it reads the thermometer on the satellite. That's good. Okay, initiating roll maneuver. Okay, 3.36 gigabytes of RAM. That's, that's what I'm looking at right now, honestly. Uh, just anticipating a possible crash. Not that I can do anything about it, but but yeah, if uh, this if the game crashes again, I'm gonna have to spend some time going into the game data folder, and that'll probably delay when this episode goes out. So yesterday, the Progress spacecraft that was supposed to bring supplies to the space station, the International Space Station had a bit of an issue. It got to orbit, but it uh, went out of control. Don't know what's up with that right now, but I assume it's probably re-entered by now. Uh, it needed to have, uh, it needed to do a maneuver in order to continue on. Otherwise, it was on an orbit that would force it to re-enter. Uh, when you look at the circumstances, it's, it's a bit alarming. After all, the Europeans have retired the ATV, the, their transfer vehicle, which is huge. I mean, that that carried quite a lot of stuff. Uh, the Japanese still have one, but I don't know how quickly they can launch stuff. I, I know, I don't think there's anything scheduled, uh, at least not anytime soon. The Cygnus aboard the Antares, of course, has been out of commission since the disaster at Wallops Island. So, that's a big problem. Basically, all we had was Progress and Dragon. Dragon's gonna go up soon. I've taken a look at they uh, they sent out a chart of the remaining supplies aboard the station, and it you know they're right. It's not a it's not an immediate danger or anything like that. But it's still a little bit alarming uh, how things have been going recently. Apparently, uh, the Russians. Uh, re would be ready to launch a new progress in 45 days so that's that's good but they have to investigate the, what caused this problem in the first place basically the way I think of it is anytime a space mishap like this occurs we take a step back from space becoming a more accessible place it's never going to be easy but you know, everything sort of, everybody gets more cautious every time something like this occurs. Caution is good, but it's the way that people tend to overswing the pendulum right after something goes wrong. Okay, off they go. Somehow they tilt out, I mean, they're, they're not quite right for the separation. They're, they they sort of tilt one way. Something off with that. I think it might have to do with the way they're attached to the, to the procedural tank. Sometimes the snapping doesn't work quite right on the procedural tanks, but I'm not sure about that. Definitely, definitely some refinement necessary on those boosters. These satellites in this kind of orbit must need a lot of station keeping fuel, huh? Okay, I think we can drop fairings now. 
and okay yes the game crashed again I dumped a bunch of parts I hope that'll be enough I hope they are not parts that uh, stockpot revamp or anything else might want to use uh, but I know that they're not parts that this rocket particularly uses so at least we've got that going for us all right so throttle is up SAS is on I haven't touched the VAB this time because going back and forth between the VAB and the launch pad and the tracking station is part of the reason why things go awry apparently. Maybe it won't uh, be a problem now that I've dumped these extra parts, but we'll have to see. Most of them are stock parts, so. Yep, let's see how this goes. So, maybe the third time will be the charm. Somebody mentioned that the low frame rates might be due to engine igniter, and I'll have to check that out some other time. I haven't tried that out yet. Another thing I've been doing is I decided to install a parallel install of Linux. So, uh, at boot, I get to decide whether I go into Windows or Linux. And that's so that I can use 64-bit KSP in Linux. And uh, so far that's had mixed results. Um, I can install all the mods and it runs. It certainly runs with a uh, vast amount of mods. No problem there at all. Problem is, uh, and uh, I've had help with this. Uh, first of all, the graphics issues because I don't have DirectX in under Linux, obviously and so I have to do things the OpenGL way and we saw at the beginning of this series there were OpenGL issues and so working my way through those and also joystick calibration and uh, making sure I can use my joystick because I have uh, except when I did Primordial KSP which was my exploration of the very earliest versions of KSP except for that I have never used keyboard for controlling the rocket on launch on KSP. Um, it's always been joystick. Well, right now, RAM usage is showing 2.5 gigabytes of RAM, so that, that's strange. That's a lot less than it was before. I'm not too sure it's reading right. Sometimes uh, it just doesn't have the right read on things. And I don't think I dumped enough parts to have that big a difference. Okay, here we go again. All things for sure, I've definitely got the booster stage launch profile down. No problems there. Plenty of practice. Okay, off they go. It's nice how my frame rates double once I dump the boosters. Okay, fairing set. Now last time when I extended the antenna, that caused problems. That co I don't know if it caused a crash. Well, it probably did cause a crash in that it broke the limit of... It was the straw that broke the camel's back kind of thing, but let's try it again. Well, there's no crash. I don't see... Is it poking out? I think so. Okay, we're uh, getting ready to leave behind the core stage. Okay, set. And ignite. Sounds like ignition of the RL-10 is good. Sound is about all I've got here right now. We'll definitely be passing apoapsis, but it should be fine. We should be okay on our trajectory right now. So, uh, target inclination is 63.4. We're continuing to increase our inclination at a steady pace. 
target uh, longitude of ascending node, I assume, is uh, 177 if you wrap around the negative 183. So we're, we're still a bit off from that. RAM usage still indicating 2.5 gigabytes. I wonder if there was a particular part that was causing a memory leak. Especially if uh, if stock parts revamp was affecting it in a certain way that was particularly bad, I don't know. Management of this stage definitely needs some work. Didn't quite hit it right this time. We can end up in a slightly elongated orbit. I can deal with that. We'll be burning from the proper periapsis location anyway. The only trick is connection, actually. Hopefully our polar satellite will help out with that. some point I hope they give us a contract to put a geostationary satellite or geosync satellite, either one, into orbit. That'll be helpful. I don't want to do it without getting the contract, but once we get the contract, I'll jump on it. I think we had some interesting satellite contracts available. We'll have to see. I'll just stop the periapsis at uh, at about the correct location. I'm letting the apoapsis go out of hand a bit. Okay, I believe that was that was about right. Okay. So, well, it actually is a little bit beyond what they asked for. Uh, so we're 0.1 degrees off on inclination. We're about 6 degrees off on longitude of ascending node. Let's go around to periapsis so we can boost out and make further adjustments. Let's see, periapsis is where our orbit seems to cross the target's orbit. So I'm going to add a maneuver there. Is it this one? Okay, it is an inclination change at at periapsis that does the longitude of ascending node adjustment. Right, right. So yes, in order to correct the longitude of ascending node issue, we do a inclination burn at periapsis or apoapsis. That's what that, that's all about. Okay. All right. So looks like this stage will be able to handle it. We'll have to use RCS to sell the fuel down. Where's our, our main satellite dish, communication dish, doesn't use too much electric charge, so I'll activate it, and our target will be, let's make it active vessel, probably, or maybe should we just do the moon for now? Most of our activities is going to be with the moon, so I'm just going to target the moon. Looks like our polar satellite is helping with communication as planned. Okay, now I'm just going to turn on RCS and I'm going to do a little burst. It's obviously overusing RCS because I've got that problem where the thrust of the RCS is more than it should be. I could just unlock the full power RCS ports, of course. It probably doesn't make any difference now until I get this fixed. So we can finally see this stage properly. That's nice. The the satellite probe cores need 0.1 electric charge per second. So I'm hoping that we're going to get that if we face the proper way. I think we will. Again, plenty of fuel, not too bothered. Let's check if uh, fuel stability is a thing. It looks stable. And we've been sort of accelerating it anyway, so that's fair enough. Let's go. RCS off. I believe the engine can handle stability with its gimbal now. Okay, so we are off to Molnia orbit. I think it's one of those cases where if I slow down the inclination change, I'm also going to slow down the longitude of ascending yeah if I want to correct the longitude of ascending node I'm also gonna have a inclination deviation I'm gonna I'll try and optimize for both 
Oh, uh, we've got longitude of ascending node going up, but inclination going down. Maybe we can point at uh, the maneuver node now and get it all nice and balanced. Well, let's just focus on getting the longitude of ascending node right. We'll do another small burn at at the equator to fix the inclination, I guess. Oh, darn, our apoapsis is too much. Okay, we've overdone it on the apoapsis. Got carried away there. Uh, let's let's rotor burn a little bit. Okay. I'll have to be quick on the draw on this one. Okay, a little bit low, but we can no longer really make fine adjustments with this engine. I'll rely on this stage to do everything else. We're, we're going to dump the, the RL-10 stage now. So, with that said... Oh, don't do that. And those are ignited. Alright. Now... Uh, I guess we can uh, go prograde to really get our apoapsis at the right level. Okay, I think we could just use RCS to make this adjustment. Let's see. We want... let me get the exact number. Oh, well, we're going to have some further adjustments, so let's not uh, do too much here. Uh-oh. I'm starting to move towards the stage. No, no. Actually, let's not make this adjustment right now, considering we're, we're being pushed towards that. We'll wait. We'll wait some other time, actually. Yeah, that seems like a dangerous thing to do. That's, that's equatorial. We can see from the leftovers of our equatorial missions Okay, that is 63.4. Let's go up to Apoapsis and make further corrections. Yeah, it's just the location of our periapsis that's a little bit off, I think. It's not quite where the other one is. And you can see there's a gap between where our Apoapsis should be and where their Apoapsis is, too. Hopefully that's not enough to cause a problem with the contract. Ah, too low, but uh, I'll have to use RCS for that. Okay, looks like the contract is fulfilled, but let's give them it. Uh, well, they've removed the numbers. Um, okay, completion rewards 907,000 funds, 33 science, much reputation. Holy. Yeah, we've got a lot of funds now. I'm just gonna... yeah, I, I, let's leave it here. Um, we are within 0 0.01 degrees of the correct inclination, uh, two minutes of the correct uh, longitude of ascending node. The one key thing that I want to do is rotate it so that it's gonna have its solar panels ready, and I guess we'll ditch this uh, transfer stage because otherwise that's gonna draw extra electric charge. So let's see now. Can we program it to follow the sun or something? Okay. It's a shame to ditch this stage, but we do want it to be fully functional and not run out of battery power. I think there is a, a sun related, but forward, back, up, down, left, right. Not too sure those directional directions will be relevant for the way I've got the solar panels. We'll see. Uh, well, I'll just let that be. Okay, ditching the stage. And now we have a, a electrically charged, balanced satellite capable of facilitating communication from Molnia orbit. Okay, well, 
hopefully next time I won't have so many problems now I've ditched those parts and I think there must have been a particular part that was causing uh, causing a huge memory issue considering I'm still running at 2.5 gigabytes of RAM now it must have been something in particular so yeah all right well but uh, so next time hopefully I won't have to restart again and that then we'll get more done the two things that I want to aim for are landing on moon with the probe and seeing a Kerbal around the moon on a flyby. So look forward to that. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, do press like. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.